that are not working out. And it's not necessarily because you know, people are trying or they don't love each other, etc. But they grow and take place. That's a second thing. Seriously. Um, I come from a culture sometimes where um, you can have several wives. Yeah? Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a thing about uh, trying to bring uh, everything that a, a man who has influence and power into the community through women. So I see it's slightly difficult. Okay. I don't believe that when a man should cheat, but women cheat too. So, <laughs> hey. All right, I'll clap, I'll clap, I'll clap, all right. Well, women cheat too. Final words from Charles. Okay. Uh, by the way, Selma, Selma Piro, you have won the second prize from Sheer Indulgence Stand. Your winning ticket was number 14. Claim your prize. Um, don't all run out just for Selma. Well done, Selma. And the rest of you, please don't forget to write the name of this seminar and tell us how bad or good we're doing before you leave. Right. Um, Tevin. One minute. Mahanda, I think that's a great question. Um, male perception of marriage. Um, very interesting. Yeah. I don't know who's married here. 45 seconds. I'm sure we've all got a story. When you say you're getting married, they want you to run down the roof and they think you're crazy. Um, I think black marriage is white marriage, any form of marriage. What's probably common in those marriages is that people just need to learn to be a lot more tolerant than we probably used to be. And um, the society itself doesn't allow us to be tolerant because it's easy. Well, she's winding me up. I can't take any more. I've got a good job. I can afford my own place. I'm moving out. And I think you're just moving away from that, understanding that you, you don't need your partner, but wanting your partner and working towards that continuously, but being committed to your relationship as much as you commit to work, life, or any other thing, is what you need in life. Okay, thank you very much. Chris? Well, same thing I'll answer your question. Um, I've been married for eight years. I've been with my um, the wife. I've been with her for um, 15 years in total. So the thing is, I've seen lots of friends get married and divorced during that period of time, and they've all said, like, what have you done? What have you done? Well, the thing is, what we do is that it's purely communication. We really do talk about everything. And you, at that age old saying you can't go to bed angry and all that type of thing, it does work. Yeah. Because what you do need to do, you do need to really sit down and speak to them. Whatever's on your mind, you've got to get it out and actually speak to somebody. So I've seen lots of friends, believe you me, go through, get married, they think it's fantastic, the paraphernalia, getting on the special day, and then the next minute, two years down the line, you know, they actually didn't really make it. So the thing is, I personally think is that's really communicating and talking really is the key. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mr. C. Uh, two points I want to make. Um, first one is that, for me, I'm not married, but when that day comes, I understand simple things that it's a contract between me, my partner, and God. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the time, people take the God part out of it. You've got to understand it. That's how it works. And when you come together, the three of you, you deal with all of your problems within that yeah. trinity. Yeah. Also, people have got to understand this. I'm an independent woman. I'm <laughs> no, not in a relationship. You've got to be interdependent to make it work. Yeah. Finally, going back. To, sorry, this is nothing to. Going back to the young man who was talking about um, the images of black males. What it is. Quite, quite rightly, we as people have start to, we've got to start to challenge the way how we're perceived, i.e. black on black crime. That's a racist statement. Don't That's use right. it. Challenge anybody who That's does right. it. When a little white girl goes missing, yeah, how many of you go into work and say, oh my days, that thing about baby pee or that thing about blah, blah, blah. White and white crime's getting out of control. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's bang, it's bang on. Okay. Got to challenge well done. Okay, cool. cool. Um, just for clarity, married five years. I concur with this gentleman here with almost everything he said in terms of relationships and marriage. Don't go to bed angry, take care of yourselves. Forget the Cosby Show, forget Tiger Woods, and take care of yourselves. Um, in terms of, that was the first soul, that was the marriage. And then cheating, nobody thinks cheating is cool. Actually, a lot of people think cheating is cool. Nobody thinks it's okay. So that's, that's a moral thing, that's like stealing. It doesn't matter, you know, people will do what they'll do. Don't, don't put it as a man or a woman, it's just the individual. 30 seconds, I'm done. Okay, thank you very much.
Um, Please, give yeah, us your thoughts. Yeah, just to reiterate what Mr C was saying, I really agree with him about the, the trinity in the relationship. And I think that when men are emotionally and spiritually mature, then they'll be ready for marriage. Simple. Okay, thank you very much. Right, Gary. I don't think that love relationships are different from any other type of relationship, whether they be employer, employee, or teacher or student. There's something that each person wants from the other. And so I just think that you have to try and ensure in a society which can often seem very superficial that you look beyond the pale, effectively, and try and look to, for matters of substance, quite frankly, and to ensure that the, the relationship that you start has a foundation and is not just based on aesthetic or material qualities. Okay. Okay. Um, keep your water bottles on that side of the room, please. <laughs> and hear this. Marriage, commitment has got nothing to do with marriage. Marriage has got nothing to do with commitment. Mm -hmm. Marriage is an insurance against insecurity. Full stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, now. <laughs> now. Um, the business about cheating, etc., is this: you you can cheat whether you're married or whether you're in a partnership with somebody. What prevents you from doing it in either case is the extent to which the person, your partner, male or female, you respect enough is a genuine friend whom you would not betray <coughs> and is somebody whom you look up to so that the, what they think about you is important to you. Alright, so let's, let's recast all these notions of love and <laughs> marriage and commitment and so on. Chuck all of that out of the window and begin to deal with the issue of respect for the person and the loyalty that you owe to one another because of what you share. Okay. Um, it's much harder without a template. If you don't have a template, it's much harder, and it's much harder for men, um, I think, because um, our brains are wired differently. For every, you know, you have two halves of your brain. Um, for every um, pathway uh, across from the left to the right of the brain, for every one that a man has, a woman has four. Now, neurologically, people take that and we make the jokes about men not being able to multitask and women having superior brains. But when you actually analyze that, it does something for men. It makes men prioritize. Because if you are using less resources in any situation, you will prioritize. When it comes to sex and love, men think about that very differently. Men can have sex and not love you. So you okay. need to consider whether the man no. you are with is mature Time. enough, is ready, is at the age or stage to make that commitment. Okay. Before you get into the love side of things, a lot of um, women will use sex and make the mistake of thinking that I'm giving him sex, why won't he marry me? At times going. Yeah. So, so I, the, the, the key thing I would just kind of talk about is from a male's perspective, does the man have the emotional capacity that marries up with your expectation. Because okay. we often have expectations above a person's capacity. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think that we've heard from diverse viewpoints. And one thing is certain. You have discovered that men don't think alike. You've discovered that men are still in that process of learning. And one thing is quite evident. From my perspective, no man, and I've said this continually, is greater than a woman. 
No woman is greater than a man. But our greatness individually is discovered in our purpose when it is discovered and fulfilled. And the ability to discover our purpose and the ability to live out our passion is what ultimately makes us who we are and who we should be, whether that is in a marriage relationship or not. And I want to say that because my time is up, I did ask how many hands, and at that time, my dear, I'm sorry, your hands went up. I looked over and over again several times, so I didn't ignore you. It's just that you never, I beg your pardon. Um, it's just that you didn't raise your hands at that time. It's only a couple of minutes, and you've been talking a couple of minutes. Been... Yeah, you're taking my time. I'm the chair. I'm entitled to that. I am entitled, but I can be nice. You can just be nice to me instead of attacking me. May I just have one, half, half a minute, please? Well, you can. I just said, well, you can. I just said, well, you can. I just want to say, okay, and this relationship thing, I think we, we just get too hung up on it, really. And there is, there is, a, there is a feeling that I have that um, men think they're doing us a favor marrying us. <laughs> and I can see why, quite honestly. It is, with relationships, for me, it's, it's simple. It's about taking responsibility. Whether you're married, whether you're in a partnership, if you're married and you get divorced, you take the responsibility in that case. People get divorced all the time. If you're married and you have children, you're not married and you have children, you take responsibility. And that's all there is to it. Whether you're a man or a woman, you take responsibility for whatever it is you have to take responsibility for. An ex-partner, children, you want to Okay. That's what it comes down to it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You did not tell us your name, by the way. Your name. Okay, okay. Okay, that's fine. What I would say is, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's been a very useful discussion. I can say this much, that talking about marriage relationships, I'm the beneficiary of a family, my mom and dad were married for over 50 years, so I'm trying to beat them. I've got a long way to go, but we're on it. And so I want to say, whether you believe it's love, keep love alive. Whether you believe it's based on commitment, keep commitment there. Whether you believe it's based on respect, keep respect there. But whatever it is, we were not born to dominate one another. We were born to dominate in the sphere of our grace and our calling, but not to dominate the other. Let us respect one another and give each other what is due them. Thank you, Rev. Um, Professor Gus John has a book, The Case for a Learner's Charter for Schools, and he's got several other books there. Can I highly recommend him to you? And thank you, and thank you, thank distinguished you. panel, for being with us. Thank you for staying with us. God bless you.